Hey guys, I'm Maniac. And I'm Fletcher. And today we're going to do a comparison video on Resident Evil 7 between Resident Evil 5 and 6. So I'll start with the gameplay. And the gameplay to Resident Evil 5 and 6, this is the big difference between the two games, is that you weren't able to move whenever you aimed in for Resident Evil 5. And that's the difference between Resident Evil 6, is you were able to dock and roll and just aim and move at the same time, which in the game, a zombie game, it's it's kind of expected that you're able to move and shoot at the same time. But on Resident Evil 5, it was just Chris and Sheva's campaign. Then for Resident Evil 6, there was Jake and Sherry, Chris and Pierce, Leon and Elena, and Ada, an agent for the co-op portion. But yeah, the game, it, it was set up and Resident Evil 5 was more of a, it was kind of still in its roots, but they were trying something new with the action based shit. They still had like a few of the puzzles in there, but it was a lot more action based and Resident Evil 6 was a lot more action based than puzzle solving and horror type stuff. The Leon and Elena's campaign, that was really like the base of what Resident Evil was built off of, you know, the slow walking zombies and all of that. But yeah, so that was a little bit of the gameplay, and I'll pass it over to Pletcher to talk about Resident Evil 7 gameplay. So, the gameplay for Resident Evil 7 is kind of similar, but it's not. Like, it has nothing to do with the other Resident Evil games at all. There's a small cameo from someone, I'm not going to spoil it, just in case you haven't played it yet. I'm not going to spoil it. You can't jump and aim your gun and all that other stuff. And it's in first person compared to Resident Evil 4, 5. I think it's the first Resident Evil game to feature first person. And it goes back to its roots from the very first Resident Evil. More focused on the horror and the puzzle solving. And it follows this dude named Ethan Winters. He's looking for his wife that's supposedly been dead for a few years. And he follows this email that he gets to Louisiana and comes across the Baker estate. It's full of crazy people, cannibals. And he has to get out and try to save his wife. And besides the three people in the house, which is Jack Baker, Marguerite Baker, and Lucas, the only other enemies you come across are these little things called Bolden. They're just like in the walls and stuff like that, and they're really difficult. So, I'm gonna pass it back over to Maniac for the next section. Alright, so I'll start off with the setup. The setup for Resident Evil 5 is a little bit different from Resident Evil 6. It has one campaign, Chris and Sheva, and it's based off in Africa. So, like all the zombies are black, yeah, I'll just leave it there. And you're trying to figure out. I haven't played the game in so long, but something. And there's some puzzles in there, and it's that's where they mostly got the you know, action-based thing, and where it took off to Resident Evil 6. Like I said in the gameplay, that was the real difference for Resident Evil 6 and 5, was they have four campaigns, you know, Chris and Pierce, Leon and Elena, Jake and Cherry, and Ada, and Agent for the co-op portion. But the Resident Evil 6 was, like I said, action-based explosions and all that crazy shit and then Leon and Elena's campaign was really you know, like the foundation of where Resident Evil started off. The majority of it is based in a city then you know they go to like carriers on the ocean and they go to an underground sea lab and you know, like it starts off with Leon and Elena's in a college campus. So it varies. And Jerry and Jake starts off in a winter, like, Russia type place. So the way it's set up is, you know, shoot, dive, roll for Resident Evil 6. And Resident Evil 5, you just were able to shoot and figure out some puzzles. But yeah, I'll throw it over to Fletcher and talk about the section I just talked about. Well, so instead of Resident Evil 7 is more based on puzzle solving and horror themes rather than the fast paced action that Resident Evil 5 and 6 had. You have to kind of, you know, use your brain a little bit to work on all the different puzzles that are in the game and strategically work yourself around the mansion to get yourself out. They have a, a weird power up system where you collect antique coins around the house and in, instead of flashbacks in videos, like cutscenes, there's actually like VCR tapes that you play and you actually play in the game, like in the VCR. I thought that was pretty cool. 
rather than five and six, it's slower pace, more horror themes, jump scares, and there's action in it too, especially towards the end. But majority of the game is stealth, suspense, horror, puzzle solving stuff. Okay. On that note, I will talk about how much fun we had playing the game. I thought that Resident Evil 5, we had a bunch of fun playing that, but the fact that you couldn't move while you were shooting, you were just stuck in one place, that was the drawback. And, you know, they changed that for Resident Evil 6 and 7. So, the fact that they just added four campaigns to Resident Evil 6, and me and Pletcher have definitely made Resident Evil 6's last ability last way longer than it should have. But, yeah, like we said in the review, it's really how you play the game. Because Resident Evil 6 didn't get very good reviews, and it didn't have the purchases or the sales that Capcom was hoping for. So, yeah, obviously there was a sequel to Resident Evil 6, but it's just not the actual characters in Resident Evil 6. So yeah, I'll pass it over to Pletcher to talk about the lore for Resident Evil 7. Yeah, so Resident Evil 7, I think the main selling point was them going back to their roots, like I've proved hundreds of times already in this comparison. The atmosphere as well. I mean, it's got that classic Resident Evil feel, and whenever I played through it, it was a lot more fun to play it in the dark with, you know, no lights on. You would creep yourself out pretty much, so I think the creep factor with this game was also a main focal point to bring people back to what a horror game should be. And you know, not saying that there wanted, not saying that there weren't you know scary images or creepy stuff in Resident Evil Five or Six. No, 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 not at all. I'm just saying that the imagery in I think the suspense mixed with the horror very well in Resident Evil Seven, where it was like you knew something was coming, but you didn't know when it was coming, and when it finally does, it makes you jump even though you're anticipating it, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Whereas Resident Evil Five and Six, like there's a cutscene, and yeah, like there's grotesque imagery, but it, it doesn't have the same feel as what you would in Resident Evil 7 due to the scary atmosphere. Or the previous Resident Evil. It's like, yeah, like you said, get back to the roots. Or, yeah, or Resident Evil 5. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I guess on that note, then we'll wrap up the video. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison of Resident Evil 7 and 5 and 6. So, hope you guys also stay tuned for our other videos, or you can click the two links above us, and you can also check out our channel. That'd be much appreciated. We're also live streaming every other Sunday. Hope you guys come and join us on Maniac. I'm Pletcher, and make sure you check out our Facebook page. Come to Patreon by clicking the Patreon link in the description. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Well, obviously, follow us on YouTube. So click subscribe and ring the bell. Catch, Catch you next, next time. time.